So you have this very early time a rehearsal of you know much of the vax anti-vax rhetoric that alas is sort of still with us actually. This was painted around, I think, 1718, which is the wife of the British ambassador to the Ottoman Empire. She was famous before she went with her husband to Constantinople for many reasons. She was a published poet, quite a good one, actually, one of the very earliest women to um, have her literary work published, Afra Ben was a playwright who, um, probably the most famous one earlier, but she became, as a result of her published poetry, a friend of very important figures in the English literary world. So she was a celebrity and she'd had two things that really were traumatically formative for her. Her older brother, also called Edward, had died of smallpox um, a few years before, in 1715, three years before she went to Constantinople, and she herself had suffered a horrific attack of smallpox, which very nearly killed her. And she'd been a famous beauty, and the smallpox left her very disfigured, which the artist, of course, um, decides to cosmetically ignore. She'd lost her eyelashes famously, and so she was very wounded by this. And when she went to the Ottoman Empire with her husband, um, she discovered, she writes this up very beautifully and elegantly in letters to a friend of hers, Sarah Chisel, um, and later in what were called the Turkish Diaries, published much later, um, that she'd noticed that the women of the seraglios of the pashas, the aristocracy of the empire, and indeed of the sultan and the grand vizier, um, were absolutely unmarked, and this was in direct contrast to the disfigurement of both men and women in, in England and in Europe. And she asks why, and they tell her that this curious thing called inoculation had been practiced over many generations, usually by elderly Greek women um, inside the Ottoman Empire. There was resistance to it among the Islamic Muslim population, um, although there were plenty of Muslims who in other areas, not in Turkey itself, but in North Africa and in Syria, who absolutely accepted inoculation. It was a folk practice among them. But in, in sort of metropolitan Turkey, um, the imams were against it for the reasons you can hear on Christian talk radio in America now. It's a violation of God's absolute right to arbitrate between who will live and who will die. She went ahead with it with her six-year-old son when her husband, I mean, I think they talked about it, though you don't know from the documents, um, but she, what is true is that she waits for him to go to Edirne, to Adrianople, with the sultan, and then she inoculates. She has one of these old Greek ladies come, recommended by a man called Emanuele T uh, um, Timoni, who was a dragoman, interpreter, and a physician, and a diplomat, and he found this elderly Greek inoculator, and there was an embassy surgeon, a Scotsman called Charles Maitland, who was there looking on and then actually completed the operation. He thought the old Greek lady was being too rough with the little boy and the little boy was crying and so on. So she goes through with it and the boy is fine. He has a light fever. He has just very few scabs and they all drop off and he's fine. So when she goes back to England, she inoculates her daughter, um, who's three, um, and it's also a success. And she amazingly converts the Princess of Wales, Caroline of Ansbach, who becomes Queen Caroline II. And something then, she becomes a, a publicist for this very, very counter... And nobody knows about germ theory. Nobody knows there's no such thing as the immune system. Nobody knows that. Nobody knows what a bacteria is. The word virus, oddly enough, is used. Um, so there are kind of all sorts of theories about how um, infections arise from the imbalance of humours. They may arise from rotting organic matter, both animal and vegetable. But they, they don't understand the absolute basics, really, of the way pathogen, what pathogens are and, and how they work. But they go ahead with this nonetheless. When this is known, since she wants to be a public campaigner, because one in six people who contract smallpox die of it, and those who survive, as I say, are very, very badly damaged, um, she then becomes 
a target, especially as a woman and as a mother, and as a woman who'd done this in what in England is regarded as the decadent East, you know, not even a Christian culture. And uh, it said, what kind of mother would want to inject poison into the body um, of their perfectly healthy child? Why would you ever do that, really? So you have it as very early time um, in the early 1700s, a rehearsal of you know, much of the vax, anti-vax rhetoric that, alas, is sort of still with us, actually.